the cloud. It's super vague, right? When you say the word cloud, you could mean so many different things. And I'll be the first to admit, I don't know a whole lot about it all, I'm still learning, but I do know that a whole lot of folks use Microsoft 365 or Azure Active Directory, now called Microsoft Entra ID, I think. And we could at least get into an environment where we can play with it, practice, develop, maybe test some things and learn all about the cloud and cloud security. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can easily set up your own Microsoft 365 tenant and start to play with this cloud security stuff. So I'm inside of just a flat vanilla Windows 11 virtual machine that we can use as our environment, our endpoint to play with. But honestly, hey, we wanna be setting up a cloud environment. So let me spin up my web browser. I'll just use Microsoft Edge, cause hey, whatever, that's how we got started with this virtual machine. And I'm gonna to go to developer.microsoft.com. Now I know all this stuff might not be every everyone's cup of tea, but seriously, Microsoft does do a relatively decent job at at least getting information and documentation and safe playgrounds and sandboxes for us to play with. In fact, we could just go dive into Microsoft 365. And here we are in the Microsoft 365 Dev Center. We could go ahead and try to sign in and then create our own Microsoft 365 tenant. This way, you could administrate your own development environment. You can create automations. You can learn, hey, all the things necessary to make this M365 or Entra ID cloud environment work and work with security. So if we go actually into the more segment of the navigation on top, in the developer program, we can simply join now and get started with the Microsoft 365 developer program. Let me go ahead and click join now. We will need to log in with our own Microsoft user account. But hey, since we're kind of setting up this environment for ourselves, for learning in the playground inside of this own virtual machine, we can just go ahead and create one super duper simple so it doesn't mess with anything else. I'm gonna start with a blank slate. So let's get a new email address. I'll just call this like JH YouTube. Hopefully that's okay. Nah, how about JH dash YouTube? How about that? I'll create a little bit of a password here and now we can sign up and create our account. Now that we have our own Microsoft account, we can join the Microsoft 365 developer program. Just a couple of questions that should be super easy to cruise through. We can fill that out, accept the terms and conditions, and then click on next to say, look, we are going to be using this for our own personal projects, just for our learning. And what are we interested in developing? Uh, all the above. Like, hey, I want to learn everything. Give me as much as I can. Now this will just give you an E5 subscription and license, and we can easily spin up just an instant sandbox that gives us everything we need to play with M365. It's pre-configured with fictitious users, uh, sample data within Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Graph, SharePoint, Office add-ins, everything that we might like. So honestly, Instant Sandbox is probably fine for me. We can customize the domain name, but we should be a-okay. Let's just click on next. Let's define an admin username. Let's just call this M365 admin and whatever password we might want. I will note though that this has some pretty bad like password policy stuff. It looks like it's limited between 15 and 20 characters. So we can just set some stupid thing and then maybe change it later. And for the 16 fictitious users, we could set a specific password for them rather than reusing the same admin one that I just created. This does need to do some phone verification, but that's just fine. At least it gets us set up with like multi-factor authentication and all the things for good two-step verification. Finally, after we set up the phone verification, we're all done. It set up the Microsoft 365 developer program and environment. We have our E5 subscription with our own domain name, about nine user licenses and 16 fictitious users, and we can go add whatever sample data packs we might like. Now, note, I know some people might question, hey, how come you only have 90 days left or however much time available displayed on that little page here. Look, it will automatically renew, at least if you use it. Like if you play with this, if you go tinker and mess around in the developer environment, then it should just automatically, hey, send you an email that say, look, everything's good. And we've the renewed the subscription for you to keep playing in your test bed. Our tenant is set up and we can go play with this within like the Azure portal or Microsoft Entra ID. And we can go mess with it on the command line even. Like, hey, let's do some of those little hacker stuff, you know, hey, pulling in some PowerShell modules and starting to play with the different APIs that could use a whole lot of these Microsoft 365 services. Let's dig into that just after this. I do want to give some special love. If you're interested in a whole lot more cloud security, let me tell you about Wiz. It makes cloud security absolutely 
absolute magic. Wiz provides a cloud-native application protection platform that scans each and every layer of your cloud environments and gives you complete visibility across all of your technology stack so that you have the big picture and you can focus on what matters most. Whether or not you're working with AWS or Azure, Google Cloud Platform, VMware vSphere or Kubernetes, across every single virtual machine, container, serverless function or data store, Wiz finds the blind spots and gives you more context with less noise. Because when a threat faces your environment, it's not just one isolated issue, it's multiple. Different vulnerabilities or misconfigurations, and Wiz ties these all together across each cloud component and uncovers all types of risks. Wiz streamlines your alerts and routes them to the right people on the right platform. And you and your organization can proactively protect your environment. You can keep your cloud secure with Wiz. Get started with Wiz with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash Wiz. Huge thanks to Wiz for sponsoring this video. Back in our web browser, if we actually try to now navigate to portal.azure.com, we should be able to see as we sign in here with our developer tenant, we know we created the account m365 admin at that domain. We can go ahead and log in and let's enter our password, hit sign in and oh. Hey, with the conversation of cloud security, this is a good thing to do. We should set up two-factor authentication, so I'll get this cruising on my phone here. Let me just enter the number 15, and that gives us our two-factor and security defaults. We can stay signed in here. And now Azure will be loading up for us. And if we wanted to, hey, we could start the tour, but I think we're good. There it is. Azure Active Directory is becoming Microsoft Entra ID. Not confusing at all. Now, if we click on the little hamburger icon, we could probably go dig into that Microsoft Entra ID section. And here it is. We can see our primary domain and the license is set up at the P2 here. Now we could dig into all of the users and groups here in the graphical user interface over on the web, playing in the Azure portal. But look, we can go also play with this on the command line using some PowerShell stuff that might allow us to work with the Microsoft Graph API or the stuff under the hood here. With that, I want to go to aadinternals.com. And this is one awesome resource where we might be able to go play with, hey, some M365 hacking and admin toolkits, all things in the sake of security here. And this is, in all honesty, just a PowerShell module that's put together by some of the super smart, incredible folks. Credit where credit is due. This is Dr. Nestori Sinema. I don't know if I'm getting your name. Dr. Azure AD. But take a look at the documentation for AAD internals. It's something that we can install super duper easy from just PowerShell. We can install module AAD internals and let's get to it. Let me fire up on the command line, just a simple terminal here. We'll get PowerShell started and let me install module AAD internals. Mm, don't forget, hey, we should run this as an administrator. So let's restart PowerShell with control shift enter. Here we go. Yep, we're good to allow this install module AAD internals. Enter on that. We can go ahead and hit yes. I'm fine with installing that. And A, I'm cool with the untrusted repository. All right, that should be cooking. And now once I get my prompt back, let's clear the screen and let's import module AAD internals. Ah, loading scripts is disabled. So let's set our execution policy to remote signed. And let's try that again. Looking good. There it is. Here's a super cool banner for AAD internals. Now back on the documentation, let's see how we can play with this. And it should be super duper easy. Just getting into some access tokens. If we jump to that playing with access token section, we probably can understand a little bit more about this. Most of the functions are using the REST APIs that do require OAuth access tokens. That's how hey, Azure or Entra ID does a lot of its authentication. The AAD internal modules is using the following types of access tokens. And since version 0.4.0, all tokens are cached if tax save to cache switch is used. Looks like there are different kinds of functions or commandlets for any specific APIs that we want to hit, like Azure Active Directory Graph. So we could just use get AAD int access token for AAD graph. <laughs> and that is the underlying sort of brain and smarts behind a lot of this. So we could try to use that. Let's use get AAD int access tokens for AAD graph, save to cache, and let's try it out. I'll copy and paste, enter this here. There we go. Okay, so now we can just simply log in basically from the command line, right? Let's try to use our M365 admin at our domain. And I guess I'm gonna have to memorize 2nt by 4 dot on my 
Microsoft.com. Slap that in here and we'll enter our password. And now we'll need our two-factor authentication. We can just use the phone app notification as we've been doing before. So I'll get that on my cell phone here. We'll approve the sign-in with the given number. Yep. And now we should see that authentication complete and take a look. Our access token is saved to the cache for the same tenant ID that we saw inside of the portal. We can validate that just to see the cache credentials with get AAD in cache. Slap that one in and take a look. This is what we're working with here. Now, just as a sort of hello world demonstration, let's try to simply list all of the users inside of this tenant. We can go back to the documentation here for AAD internals and let's just see, do we have like a get users commandlet? Yeah, here it is. User manipulation, get AAD int users. This function returns users of the tenant and then we could select kind of whatever we want here. Let's just grab the users and select their user principal name, which at least in the example output is just the email address that we're associating them with. Get AAD int users and let's select user principal name. Let's pull all of this down and there it is. These are all of our fictitious users that the Microsoft developer program has set up for us. Here's Alex, here's Isaiah, here's Diego, and here is our M365 admin that we can use to continue to explore, poke and play with this environment. All in the cloud. Hey, before we wrap things up though, let me say credit where credit is due. Uh, this whole walkthrough, the setup of the M365 environment and the developer program, uh, kudos, all credit, big ups to Nathan McNulty, who had shared this on Twitter, a good little thread here, and I believe is also on his blog. So look, uh, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here. We always are in this industry. But uh, again, all the credit goes to Nathan for showcasing this startup. With that, we have opened the door for some more cloud security content, right? Hey, for some opportunity to poke and play with Microsoft Azure or the Microsoft Entra ID. It's gonna take me a while to get used to that. But look, all those users, hey, do they have two-factor authentication on? What are their logins up to? Are they maybe logging in from some rogue locations where they shouldn't at odd times? Or are there any API weaknesses or securities or misconfigurations that we should be tracking? And with that, hey, we can dig into it. But if you don't mind, I'd love to, hey, really recommend you guys go check out Wiz. Sponsor this video. They've been doing some incredible stuff. Like, what is it? The fastest growing cybersecurity company ever. So seriously, Wiz is phenomenal. And I'm super duper to have them here with us. I hope you go create your own Microsoft 365 tenant. And I hope we get to play with some more cloud security in our own playground, testbed, and sandbox environment. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.